to birth. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, cheater. Can I have it? <laughs> Give me it. I need it. I need it. Excuse me, sir. Can I have that chameleon bleep? Ah! <laughs> this is why mom doesn't need to throw toys in the house. I started before I even like get into like doing my makeup or like anything. I make myself a little breakfast thing. I do prefer like these little Justin and or just cracking egg cups. Just cracking egg, yes. Um, these are really good. I do the veggie scramble one. I get these at Publix, but you could probably get them at any grocery store. Um, anyway, they're just so easy. Like you just literally crack an egg into it, pour the toppings in, and then put it in the microwave for 45 seconds, stir it, and then put it in for another 45 seconds and get it out and stir it again. So it's so easy. Um, but anyway, I just feel like I've advocate, advoc advocated for so many like unhealthy things that I owe it to you guys to show you some better options. So I'm going to throw this in the microwave. And then I also, I've always like heard like, isn't orange juice supposed to be really good for you? So I've been making myself drink a glass of orange juice every morning too. What is it? Like the vitamin, what is in orange juice? Is that just some shit my grandma used to tell me? <laughs> you know, I realized that a lot. Sorry, I like, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, hi, this is me without makeup. It's not like I look that different, really. I don't wear a ton of makeup these days, but I just set it up like that. So um, it'd be easier for the just crack an egg. This is being a, this is turning into a vlog, by the way. It just hit me this morning that I haven't done a vlog on like my new lifestyle, <laughs> my new lifestyle, but that's, that's literally like my new mobile life journey, you know? I miss the vlogs. I'm out of practice. I don't even know how to do it anymore. But I prefer to watch longer vlogs. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Also, I had like tried to record me putting all the stuff in the cup and everything. And somebody messaged me, <coughs> Shannon, and um, <laughs> I looked at my fucking phone and flung my cheese everywhere. So anyway. And like, if you're really hungry in the morning, sometimes I'll make oatmeal, which is, I think everybody knows how to make it, but just in case you don't know how to make oatmeal, you literally just boil water, <laughs> then pour it on the oatmeal and stir it. So I will do that sometimes, like if I'm ever like still hungry after eating the egg cup, which sometimes I am. And what I normally do is I eat like a really big breakfast and then that usually keeps me full all day, but that then if I get hungry, that's when I'll eat, um, I like this. <coughs> Ma'am, nothing's happening. Life of living with the Chihuahua. I like these like food, these little bars. This I got the sweet and salty. I haven't tried this one yet, but this is probably the one I'm gonna try today. What's that hand movement I was doing? <laughs> um, but I think I'm gonna do that one today because the blueberry sounds really good. Um, and yeah, so I just bring stuff like that because you know, like when we're out on the go, that it is really hard to eat. Um, and to sit there and have a full meal is, is really hard when you're on a schedule. So that's why I like stuff like that, that, you know, protein bar, I can eat really quick while I'm driving or whatever. Like I can, um, I, I try to keep it simple. Like you could do like a sandwich and like what I used to do, cause I did that a long time ago. And like, if you do the sandwich, what I do is I'll stop at like a gas station and a lot of gas stations have like 
mayonnaise and mustard and you know whatever you would want to put on your sandwich so that way you don't have to like put it on at the beginning of the day and it'd be nasty um i do that a lot too so there's options um i have considered i really need to look into getting like a mini fridge that's something I really want to do is maybe get like a mini fridge for the van because that would open up a lot of possibilities. But I'll show you. I don't know what I'm going to make for dinner yet, but um, it'll take you long for the journey. We can do like a full day vlog. It'll be fun, Steve. All right, I'm going to eat this and do my makeup and I'll be back. All right, you guys, I've made it to Starbucks. I love when I have that. The, these hairs, they just they're gonna do that until I wash my hair tomorrow mm -hmm. so anyway um yeah I had enough time and the Starbucks was on the right side of town sometimes my clients are going the opposite way of the Starbucks like I groom in like the country basically uh but some areas are more civilized <laughs> so when I go to the Starbucks side of town then I like to stop and get my Starbucks I'm back on my matcha. This seems to be my drink for this time of year. This is gonna drive me mad. I get to look at it all day while I'm on camera. Perfect day to start vlogging again. I've just been thinking about it and that's like really what I wanted to do. And I've wanted to do YouTube for like years and I just, I feel like every time that life is challenging me that I go away from YouTube and it's counterproductive since that's like really what I want is to be successful on YouTube and we don't we all right so anyway I'm trying to get this all fucking mixed in they try to not give you a straw with this drink and it would literally get like a mouthful of matcha powder if you didn't have a straw I forgot my fancy one of my clients gave me like a a little cup cozy thing that keeps your drink cold longer. I've done it. It's in my other car. It happens a lot. Having two cars. I mean, shit. That's what I've had. I literally have like 20 masks now. I used to just have grooming masks. Like with like little paw pads and shit on it. Uh, paw pads. Paw prints. <laughs> but, um, anyway, now... I have like solid black ones. That's my vibe. So, okay. It's like 15 minutes. So, we got enough time for a quick chat. Um, I really wanted to do a video. I'll probably do it on Celine. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, maybe Celine. Um, but I want to do a video on, like, my Shizu groom with the clipper back, you know? Because now I, I groom a little bit different than I have in previous Shizu grooming videos. I don't know. Like, sometimes I just, like, get worried that I'm getting too repetitive. Like, I don't want to, like, just show you guys the same stuff all the time. But then that, like, then I end up, like, not making videos. Because I'm like, oh, like, that's too repetitive. I'm just grooming another Shizu kind of thing. But... You know, as we learn, like most of them, most of the time you don't get a purebred Shizu. Small fluffy dogs, it's rare that you get purebreds. At least like for me, I get mainly mixed breeds. So they're all like a little bit different, you know? Wow, we really got a lot of timing this morning. Oh, well, she's having a good morning. Doesn't that like make you so happy? Like when you pass somebody and they just like have like, the biggest smile on their face and like you can just tell they're having a good day. Like she just gave me some, was it serotonin? <laughs> Isn't that what it is with the happy, happiness feeling? She gave me that like, cause she just looked like she's having such a good morning. I'm like bitch, I need to be having a good morning. There's nothing wrong with my Monday. I'm a little tired. My sleep schedule's been a little messed up. I've been working a lot, so that made me tired, so then I've wanted to take naps, and the naps are really fucking me up, so I can't do that, I'm going to stop, because they're making it that I'm up all hours of the night, because I'm sleeping during the day, um, so anyway, that's, um, that's been fucking up my days off, is that I want to take a nap, I just, yeah, 
anyway, like that's, I, I have like my days off a lot of times are like my veg mode days, you know, I just sit around and eat good food and just fucking chill and watch. My favorite shows right now are Kardashians. I loved, if you have Hulu, you gotta watch the act. It's about Gypsy Rose. Oh my God, so interesting. Loved it. Um, so that was something. And then I always, ghost shows are always gonna be a top favorite. So like Dead Files, Ghost Adventures, that kind of thing. That's always a top favorite of mine. That's like my easy background shows. Um, that's kind of been my gig recently. It's just easy stuff to put on the, in the background. Okay, I've got to call this client back. Ah, I hate phone calls. And I have this client that's blind, so he can't text. And it's just so hard for me to find time to call him. Because the problem is, it's like when I'm in the van, sometimes, especially my older clients, have trouble hearing me. And I end up having to, like, repeat myself a lot and yell. And it's just, like, I hate it. So I try to make calls when I'm off work. But the problem is, is I'm not really off work very often <laughs> I got lucky the other day. I had a last minute cancellation. I was so fucking thankful to not have to go groom that dog. That doesn't happen anymore. I never get cancellations. I work really long hours. So anyway, I've gotten to where now I like pretty much have to do phone calls on my day off. So basically, I'm going to rework my shit to where I want to get pretty much everybody on a regular schedule. So that way I kind of have everything pre-booked. So it's just less time on my phone. Because between booking and just doing my business messages and then doing the social media messages, oh my god, I barely have time to, like, talk to anybody, like, on a personal level. Like, I'm just exhausted on it. Like, you know, I hang out with, like, my sister and I have, like, my few friends that I hang out with. Um, but it just sucks because I feel like my relationship with my friends and stuff is ultimately, like, who like what suffers when I get like really crazy with like messages online and I know like I'm, I'm gonna say this since I'm on YouTube doing a video right now I am not always very good at responding on YouTube but you guys have to understand I have to respond on Facebook on like my personal Facebook I get messages on my business Facebook I get messages and then I have Instagram that I get a lot of messages on um, and then just people that text me, like clients that just text me. So I have all these different platforms to respond to shit on that YouTube. Like I just never remember to respond to comments. Sometimes I'll see them pop up, but most of the time I don't, like, I don't always get to see them. Like I try, but you guys, like I get so overwhelmed. Like if I tried to respond to every message and every comment that I ever got, I literally would never be off of my phone. I'd just be on my phone 24 seven. And that is something that I like realized, like I was kind of like talking to somebody like very briefly. And I realized like how much like my, like first of all, like it was hard to just like sit and like be on a date without like checking my phone, especially when people are constantly messaging me. And sometimes the messages are really important. So I like have to watch, you know? So it's like, I was noticing a lot of that, um, that I was really busy and I was also thinking about it like with doing social media, you give people a glimpse inside of your life and then some people start treating you like their best friend or family member or somebody they really care about and that's so special and amazing, but also it can be a lot. Like, so if I were to ever post anybody, there's a pretty strong chance that, you know, somebody would probably, like, people may message them, people would definitely add them, follow them, whatever, and, you know, I have had issues even just posting my friends, like, I posted this girl that I'm friends with that makes jewelry, and she, when she told me some of the messages that came from, like, my followers, I was like, oh my god, like, it actually kind of made me mad. Because I was like, this is like my friend that does this for her legitimate business. And we are groomers and business owners ourselves. And the fact that you would think it's okay to basically like waste her time is just unacceptable to me. Like basically they, like she uses certain stones and there was somebody that was making her way up stones and tell them like all these details, right? But then they ended up never actually getting any jewelry made by her. And like that kind of stuff really bothers me. Like that's the equivalent 
of me calling your shop, taking up 20 minutes of your time to ask about like every ins and out of what you do and you know, what products you use and all that. And then I don't even book an appointment. Like, Oh, I'll call you back kind of thing. Like it's just rude. It really is rude. I mean, you're welcome to do your research, but like, again, it's like there is a, a certain extent. It just gets rude. Um, so anyway, but it did make me realize, I was like, God, if I ever, like, wanted to date somebody, like, that's, it's going to have to be somebody that's comfortable being on camera, or, like, maybe with the, the attention that you get from social media, because, like, I'm small scale, but I want to get bigger, so that just means it's going to keep affecting. So anyway, I guess what I'm getting at is, like, I'm still, like, at a spot where I'm realizing that maybe, like, dating is not where I'm going to be at for, like, the next probably five years or so, like, at least while I'm, like, working really hard on, like, my business, because now I'm, like, kind of getting to a point of, like, you know, do maybe, do I want to get a second van, you know, I was, and I'm just, this is just thoughts in my head, so don't fucking get excited, because I just know somebody's going, oh my god, pick me, okay, so, I have toyed with the idea. I saw a groomer talking the other day. They said they had like over 10 plus vans that they run. And basically they have a program that they bring groomers in and train them. And then they, you know, they give them a van or whatever. Um, and anyway, so I may look more into it and maybe within the next five years that could be a possibility of something that I may do is add a second van, um, but it, I would just really have to put a lot of thought into it, that's why I said, like, this is just a thought in my head, but because of that, like, if I add a second van, that's a lot more responsibility and things to do, like, I was thinking about, um, like, Melina and Jameson Con. like, they run their own, like, they groom for a living, but then they also make the DMK bows and, like, all that stuff, and it's, like, that's a full-time job too. Like they could literally just do the bows or just do the grooming. And that's like one full-time job. And that's kind of how it is with like social media too. Is like, you know, or even just grooming. Like, okay. So like running the business as a whole is like one full-time job. And then like the grooming is like a full-time job and then doing social media can be a full-time job. So it's like, I realize right now I kind of have a lot on my plate. So it's like trying to scoop in like a boyfriend or somebody in there. I don't like, it's just not, I don't know. Like I said, talking to somebody, like, made me, I don't know. It got me scared. It got me really scared. I was like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, it made me, like, start getting worried that, like, I was going to put my own plans. And that's probably just, I don't want to say trauma from my last relationship, but almost, I guess. Like, because I really put everything on hold for him. Like, I, I was telling my mom, I was like, it's literally a miracle that I was able to start a business in the middle of that relationship was so bad like I just remember like trying to write the business plan while he's having band practice in the next room and I can't even hear myself think and then they'd finish up and they'd come in the bedroom playing video games and stuff and it was like I was just such an inconvenience even like being there you know so it's like I did have to put a lot of stuff on the back burner for that relationship so I think that does scare me too so anyway <laughs> that's where that's been I guess but um what else? Oh, I registered for World Group. So I'll let you guys know how I feel. I'll do a video on that, I guess. Because I was really putting off taking classes because I learned so much better in a class. Like, I'm so easily distractible that I'm just worried that if I was sitting in a class on my computer, like, I just know me. And I'm going to be like, oh, like, I'm just going to go get up and make myself a snack real quick. And the next thing I know, it's three hours later, my class is over, and I've cleaned my entire kitchen. Like, that's literally how my brain works. Like, I'll get in there, and I'll, like, make a snack, and I'm like, oh, well, now I have some dirty dishes that I need to clean, and I'll clean those. And it's like, well, now my counters kind of need to be wiped off because, you know, some crumbs got on the counter while I was making my snack. You know, it's like... So then I get so off topic. So that's my concern for me personally, like being at home is I'm so distractible. Um, so anyway, that's why I guess I'll let you guys know what I think about World Room and if that, if the online learning is as good for me. I will say it's so much cheaper. 
like it was like eighty dollars for the entire weekend. It's at the end of this month, um, and I'm sure you have probably up until like the very last day to register because it is an online thing. Um, but it's like some Zoom thing, and you just like click on the link and whatever, and you can watch um, on your phone or whatever. So I'll probably be watching like while I'm at work and stuff, just listen to it in the background. And I think you can like rewatch like you have a certain amount of time to like keep watching it or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'll let you guys know how the experience with that is, um, because that's definitely, I don't know, like I said, I am, like, for me, I'm kind of worried about doing online, because I really like having a teacher. My favorite way, especially for, like, haircuts, like, I ideally like to be in the class with, like, a mannequin to do my own haircut, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's how I learned in hair school, so that's my preferred way, but, like, I understand that, obviously, in light of everything happening in the world, that's not really an option right now, but... I am very much looking forward to the days that we're able to do that again. I'm not even going to lie about that. Like, obviously, like, that would mean, like, the virus is, I guess, not over, but, like, contained and that people aren't dying and stuff. Like, once we get back to those days, hopefully, um, I can't wait to go back to do more, like, in-person learning and, like, I just, I do miss the trade shows. And it's so funny because... I was so pissed after Atlanta last year, and I still am, like, not a fan of how they handled the situation in Atlanta last year. I think it was really irresponsible to keep the groom show going, knowing full well that we were in the middle of this, like, huge pandemic and that people were dying. Like, it was just kind of crazy to me that they kept the convention going, but that's just my opinion on it. And in hindsight... I don't want to say I, like, wouldn't have gone, because I think I still would have, because I really, I got to take that class with, um, Jay Scruggs and Suze Echo, where they did the mannequin, and you got to do the, um, scissoring in, per in person, and I will say that my legs on the dogs, like, significantly improved after that class, after that class, and it was, it was called, like, legs four ways or something, and I really feel like, I got a lot more comfortable with, like, my hand scissoring and stuff after that, so I would definitely, as soon as that class is available again, if they do another one like that, I'm going to go, even if it's legs again, I'd like a refresher, um, but I'd like to do, like, if they did, like, heads, um, like, different types of heads, like, four different heads, I could do, like, Bichons and a poodle and, you know what I mean, something, um, giving you all some options, Jane, Jane Sue, like y'all are sitting here watching this video. <laughs> uh, but if you are watching this video, here's a suggestion, do different heads. Um, but yeah, I love Jay and Sue together, like their chemistry and their teaching, like they're so funny. They just work so well together. So anyway, um, highly recommend taking one of those classes whenever they're back, you know, and once everything it's, it's safe to go to group things again, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not telling y'all to go out in the middle of a pandemic and risk getting sick. Please don't. Please don't. Like, that's why I'm telling you about the online learning, okay? Let's do that until we're back to a place where we can safely have conventions and stuff again. And as I said, I'm very much looking forward to those days. So, anyway, I'm at Celine and Chanel's house. Um, so, I'll probably check in with y'all. Maybe I'll pop in a few times while I'm here. Um, but I'll probably check back in after I leave. <laughs> all right. I'll let you guys. All right, Miss Chanel is all bathed and blow dried. So let me put her down with Miss Celine, who is ready for her bath now. They always still have their bows after the well that we do four weeks on them. Um, so anyway, I used you know how dirty this bottle is the Squalane um, shampoo. I love on this type of texture. Um, you can see how pretty and fluffy and soft she looks. Um, and we're gonna do some work on you. I think they're like Shizu, maybe Poodle Cross, something in that category. If you're wondering what their hair type is, you can see her little legs are uh, pretty curly. Um, her, she's got straighter hair though. Like you can really tell on her back, like it stays like really straight, um, even when she's dirty. Um, but yeah, okay, so I'm about to start on Miss Celine. I just wanted to check in and say what's up. All right, you guys, here's Celine and Chanel. So we got two done and two to go. Cutest girls. All right, you guys, so I am chilling at the QT. You'll 
Obviously, keep tea gas station. So I, um, this is like the nice gas station in my area. Um, so I always stop at like whatever, like nicer gas station. Cause I mainly judge it because of the bathrooms. Um, QT typically their bathrooms are cleaner. They're not clean by any means, but they're cleaner, uh, than some of the other public restrooms. So, um, I will come and, um, hold. hi. shop in the back so I have like the water tanks and everything but yeah I come to the house no it's just a small business um there's a company though in Eastley that makes these vans and I bought them there nine pounds it'd be 85 that includes the haircut bath nails ear cleaning uh, anal glands and the little bows and accessories and me coming out in the van Uh, I take cash, card, um, check. Uh-huh. I'm actually out of cards right now, but that number up top, I don't know if you have your phone, you can take a picture, and, and uh, that's my cell. You can call or text me. All right. Janine. No problem. Thank you so much. You have a good day. Bye. That's pretty normal for the van. I always get people that ask um, how, like, about advertising. I, I don't advertise. This is my advertisement sitting at the gas station. That's why you also want to pick, like, a nicer gas station to you because you never know. He may give me a call. He's driving to BMW, okay? And he didn't, like, completely blow me off when I said 85. Anyway, um, yeah. So, anyway, I'm just chilling. I stop here. Uh, I stop at a gas station. Just go to the bathroom. Sometimes we'll grab a snack. Uh, I'm still really full for breakfast this morning, though, so I didn't grab a snack today. Um, but I'm about to go and groom Mr. Bear. I freaking forgot my watch today and it's really throwing me off. So anyway, you know, I don't even know where that guy came from. Did he pull in here because he saw me over here? He said, is this a franchise? He's so cute. <laughs> people, I'm telling you my area, I'm the only one. I'm literally the only mobile dog groomer. So people are like, what the hell is this? Did you make this yourself? I get that. I get asked that all the time. People think I like did this myself. I'm like, honey, <laughs> If I did this myself, I certainly wouldn't be grooming dogs. <laughs> I would be like Curtis Hamby over here inventing things. He's so smart. He's so fucking smart, y'all. Curtis Hamby, um, the designer of this van. Pretty damn smart, Steve. We think Steve. That's her lookout spot. She just hangs out right there. She's gotten really good. Like, she knows now if I say, like, go to your chair, she'll go and jump up in it. Because um, whenever I first started, you know, she was a backyard dog. And she would, like, try to, like, walk around and, like, get under my feet when I was driving and stuff. So, I taught her what get in your chair means. And now I just say it and she'll just go jump up. So, anyway. Yeah. Okay, y'all. I procrastinated... I'm trying to think because this client's like pretty busy like some clients I know I can get there early and it's no big deal but this client she like she's just she's busy y'all she's she's got kids she's just got stuff that she does so I don't know if she's gonna be home if I get there too early so if I head there now I'm gonna be pretty early Anyway, I'm going to hop off because I'll just sit here and just blab forever. But uh, this next dog, I may do a quick check-in, but he's one I really have to get in and out. Like, he just, like, yells. <laughs> like, I don't know. He's good as long as I'm working on him, but if I stop for two seconds to do anything, he starts yelling. Um, and he's done that at every groomer. Like, they were, the first time that I groomed him, he only did, like, one or two yells, and they, like, couldn't believe it. They were like, normally he screams his head off the whole time, so... Anyway, a loner vehicle, huh? Um, anyway, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't think I'll really pop on as much with him, but, you know, 
it is what it is. And then the last one's like a little easy um, schnauzer. And I typically like to do four haircuts a day. That's my ideal because most of my dogs do get haircuts. I have some that are just baths, some short hair dogs, you know. But um, most of my dogs are like small haircut dogs. So that's my ideal. Four small haircut dogs a day. That brings me at my quota. I like to, I need to make about $200 in a day to be able to pay all my bills. But I prefer to make closer to like $300 a day to like, that gives me flexible spending money and you know make sure that everything for the van is covered like if I want to do something last minute like go take it to get detailed or whatever I have some money back for that you know so that's that's my happy spot but again I say this all the time but that's gonna be different for everybody so anyway I'm gonna go off to this next client I think I'm really trying to procrastinate here because I'm gonna be really early if I just head there now just run in a little early today not a bad thing. Anyway, I'll check in soon. All right, you guys, this is Bear. He has a crooked spine. I can't remember her, like why, like what happened, but if you feel his spine, he's like actually crooked. So while I set up his bath and stuff, I just put a towel down for him. Um, Cause the floors are a little slick. Um, so I just put the towel down so he has somewhere to stand and relax before I start grooming him. Cause he gets really anxious if I were to just put him up in the tub, like I was gonna start on him, he just gets really anxious. So anyway, we're gonna get him started so he can go back inside. All right, you guys, so I'm on my way to my last plant. I was watching that car behind me. Um, I don't think I said on YouTube, but right before Christmas, um, I was working late as I did pretty much all of Christmas. I worked until like seven o'clock or later every night. So when I was getting home, it was like dark. Um, so anyway, I was getting home at like dark every day and as y'all know, I live by myself and, um, I thankfully was on the phone with my mom and I turned into my driveway and I saw a car turning in behind me. So thankfully I'm really quick on my toes. Um, so I slammed my van into park, so I left them just enough room so that they could get their car in my driveway, but not enough that they could follow me to my door. Um, so I slammed my van into park in the middle of the driveway. I also live on a main road, so my thought process was like, if this is somebody that's trying to like rob me or something, um, at least I'm right here by the road. And I'll scream and yell and do whatever I have to do to get people's attention. Come on now, really? With the damn thing. And then I press the button. Um, anyway, so uh, I pulled in the driveway. I jumped out of the van like super aggressively. I like when I am scared, I think like angry chihuahua, right? Like psycho chihuahua. So I jumped out and I'm like, can I help you? Like very aggressively, right? And it's like this little oblivious, I guess would be the best word to describe this couple. They're like, oh my god, like wow, this is so cool. Like your van is just so neat. I was like, yeah, I was like, okay. Um, I was like, if you need to quote or talk about grooming, I was like, you just need to get my phone number off the van um, and you can call and text me and I'll talk to you about grooming men. And they were like, oh, well we got these little dogs and blah, blah, blah. And you know, I'm like, okay. So I give them the quotes. They're like all excited or whatever. And they went inside and I like kind of, or I, you know, they left or whatever. And before I went in, I just started like really thinking about it. And I was like, man, like, I, like, I don't want to say that they were, I, I don't want to like insult their intelligence, but it was like, they were just like really oblivious to like the world around them. And they were not thinking about the fact that I'm a young girl that was living by myself. Um, and what really bothered me is when I said, I was like, you need to take a picture of the number on the van and contact me there. They were like, oh, we already had it, but we figured that it was late in the day and that you were probably on your way home. So basically they chose to follow me because they knew I was on my way home. So now these fucking two weird ass people now know where I live, right? And at the time I did not own a gun. I didn't carry a gun you know, whatever. So it scared me. And my thought in my head as I was getting out of the van was how dumb am I going to feel right now if this is somebody trying to rob me and I got out and I have no weapon, no way to defend myself. 
you know, I have my nails, and that's literally, I was going to pop an eye about, an eyeball out, y'all. Y'all think I'm kidding. I was ready. I was going for the eyeballs. Um, but it scared the shit out of me, you guys. It really fucking scared me. And they ended up texting me later and asking, you know, to book an appointment or whatever. And I had had some time to kind of calm down and think about it because my adrenaline was going. Like, I just, like, literally... I just didn't say anything because I knew I was so angry that I could come across really harsh because I, I can be that way when I'm mad. I can be really harsh. Um, so they texted me. They wanted to book. And I just said, I was like, I'd be happy to get you on my schedule. I was like, but I did want to um, talk about the other night. I was like, when you guys followed me to my house, it really freaked me out. I was like, I'm a young girl. I live by myself. I work by myself. I was like, and when I saw somebody pulling into my driveway behind me, it really scared me. I was like, in the future, if you have any inquiries on grooming, please text me. Like, you know, there's basically for no reason should you be following me to my house. Like, but I said it like super nice, super professional. And basically that insulted them. <laughs> that insulted them that I said that, hey, respectfully, please don't follow me to my home. That's stalking, by the way. Um, and they, they so in, ended up not booking that client. They basically got offended that I said that I was not comfortable with being followed home to my house in the dark. Um, so anyway, now I do carry a gun. And unfortunately, next old couple that follows me into my driveway is going to be greeted with a 32. So it's like... It's just sad that I felt like I had to go there, but like I said, as I'm getting out of my car or out of my van to figure out who just followed me to my house in the dark, I'm literally sitting here thinking like, I'm gonna die and I have no weapon or no way to defend myself. It was Christmas season, so I don't typically drive around with very much cash on me, but I did have like a good amount of cash on me. Like I was like, I'm gonna get robbed and probably murdered in my own fucking driveway. Um, and the fact that those two completely oblivious, selfish, disgusting people that thought that that was like an okay to do. You guys, like for like weeks afterwards, I was like so scared of somebody following me. So anyway, that whole long-winded thing was because I noticed somebody turned quick behind me. So now I'm like, I get kind of paranoid if I know, like if I'm going to be headed back towards my house, I'm now like super aware of who's behind me. It's just so sad, you guys. Like, it really is sad. Um, and like I said, the saddest part to me is that whenever I try to address the situation and say that, you know, I was not comfortable, that basically they were acting like I was, like, this huge bitch. You know, like, how dare I say that, you know, somebody following me to my home in the dark made me uncomfortable. How dare I say anything about that? Like, they were kind of acting like, well, you, you know, this is your business. Well, I have my van wrapped with my phone number for that reason. That doesn't mean, like, it, on my van, nowhere does it say fucking follow me home to get a quote on dog grooming. Like, are you insane? Like, what if I followed your old ass to your house? I bet you'd fucking shit yourself, bro. And like I said, next time I will get out with a gun. And it's, like, so fucking sad to me that I had to do that. Like, I literally, because of that situation, I ended up signing up to take a gun safety and handling class. I'm going to get my CWP. And I got two guns. So, people are just insane, you guys. So, you can never be too safe. Um, if you're a woman, well, if you're, really, if you're a man, too, if you're working by yourself, I would at least have pepper spray. That's what I had before, but like I said, when I'm standing in my own driveway, I just, like, it just hit me. I was like, I could have fucking died. And these people are like, oh, girl, like, just so happy. I'm like, bro, I, like, literally, if I had had a gun, it would have been in your face. I don't know what you're so happy about. <laughs> like, because you sure as hell not getting your dogs groomed by me. I can tell you that, you fucking psychos following me to my, huh, ah, fucking crazy people, man. It literally made me want to pull out of my driveway behind them and follow them home. You know what I mean? Like, you fucking lunatic. Like, how do you like being followed home in the dark, you psycho? Come on. Just use your brain, man. Anyway, so that was a interesting time. That's only happened to me once that somebody's followed me to my house. 
But I have had more than once that somebody's followed me to my client's house, and that really bothers me too. Like, I do have my phone number on the, my van. The reason it bothers me when somebody follows me to a client's house is because when somebody does that, they now feel more entitled to my time than my paying customer. And what happens is when I pull up and park, they try to get my attention before I can even talk to my client who's paying me to be there. And I find that to be incredibly rude. So if I ever do have somebody follow me to a client's house, I'll say, I need you to text that number and um, I, can, I can take care of you there. But I'm here to service this client and it's very rude of me to be booking an appointment for somebody else in their driveway, right? Like, and you know, if it were the other way around, I'm sure they would want the same respect. They wouldn't want me booking clients and be like, oh, hold on. I know you're standing there with your dog waiting on me, but hold on. I'm busy right now. You know what I mean? Like... You just, you gotta, like, sometimes you gotta, like, make it, get, get through to these people, you know? Like, especially, like, one thing I've really noticed, like, a huge downside to being a young girl that runs a business is that I do get people that don't take me seriously um, because I am young. And, and, you know, especially old people, they want to just, like, run train over your business and do things their way. And you really have to have a fucking backbone and you have to stop these people. Like, you know, I'm very sassy. I'm very quick-witted. So, you know, if I ever feel insulted, I will definitely defend myself. Um, but, yeah, that was really crazy. And I do feel like it's something that I, like, it's like part of me doesn't even want to talk about it because it scared me so bad. But I'm like, I also would feel really bad if I didn't say anything and then something similar happened to somebody else. And maybe if I had said something, they would have been more prepared with, like, an escape plan. Like, if some, if somebody really did follow them home, like, you know, my advice is, like, yeah, if you, if you feel comfortable shooting a gun, then I say, you know, get your concealed especially if you're a woman out by yourself. You just can never be too careful. Um, and if you're not comfortable with a gun, then I would at least get pepper spray. Because um, most of us mobile groomer, we, we are women and we are working by ourselves. And maybe we have a dog that rides with us like Stevie, but like I love Stevie to death, but her barking in the passenger seat was not going to save my life if that hadn't been an old couple and there'd been somebody trying to rob me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so, and if you, if you feel like somebody might be following you, I would keep driving past your house. I actually hadn't noticed them behind me. That's what scared me so bad. Um, until I went to pull into my driveway and it was like, I don't know. It was like, I, I swear, like sometimes I hear like a little voice in my ear that tells me to like do things. I know it probably sounds crazy, but it like, I like heard this voice that was like, turn around and I looked up in my rear view and I saw or like in my camera thing and I saw them like really slowing down like they were going to turn it behind me and that's when I slammed it in the park because normally I pull my van all the way down in my driveway if I had done that I would have been behind my house nobody would have seen me you know nobody would have known if those people had come up and killed me you know what I mean and like I said it's just so sad and actually kind of disgusting to me that those people like actually tried to like shame me for speaking up and saying that something made me feel uncomfortable. You know, again, the same people, I promise you, I have their address. If I just showed up at their house, they'd be like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, and I did, by the way, I did save their number in my phone. So that way, if they decide later that they change their mind and they do want to get groomed by me, I know who they are. Because, you know, when you don't save a client's name, there's a possibility that they could just call and book later and you might forget who they are. So anyway, if I ever have an issue with a client like that, I save their information everywhere. So they can't come to me five years from now when I forgot they exist and try to book with me. So, um, I have them saved in my phone, like crazy couple that followed me home or something. Psychos that followed me home, something like that. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that's a story time for y'all. I, I guess I did forget to talk that, about that on here, but somebody tagged me in a story uh, yesterday. Shauna tagged me and said that she thought somebody was following her home that ended up just being her neighbor. No big deal, but she was tagging me and saying about, like, the time that I got followed home. So, yeah, that did happen right before Christmas, and yes, it really fucking scared me. Um, so... 
just be a quick thinker. I like also, I know it sounds insane, but like, okay, like if somebody were to attack me right now, I would fucking twist and tea. <laughs> Red Bull smash them in the face. That would like, I literally like closest weapon. Like if you're tiny like I am, find your closest weapon, bro. Anyway, um, I'm at this client's house. Let me figure out how to get out of their way. They're pulling out of their garage, but I'll check in a minute. Alright, so last one of the day is Miss Sadie. She just gets a schnauzer clip. Get this one up here. Come on, love. There we go. What do you think, Steve? She said she got anything to sniff? Nope, she didn't wear anything in. Alright, about to get started. She's kind of matted right there, so her mom went down a little shorter. Um, I agree with this little girl. She's probably every three to four weeks. She's, I feel like she rarely gets any hair on her, and her mom's like, she's so long and stinky. One of those, you know, and you're like, your dog's never been long or stinky, but I get you. Honestly, look, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I don't want to come across like I'm complaining. I'm very thankful that I have such good clients that care so dearly about their dogs. It is funny to me. Like she's like he's stinky or she's stinky. I'm like, Stinky ain't yeah, being stinky a day in her life. She knew some of the clients I agree with. They're stinky. I got some stinky clients, but Sadie's not one of them. She's gotta spend most of her time indoors. She's very pampered. Are you? Yes you are, your mommy loves you. She's another one that's been with me since I started in the van. My mom was really excited whenever I started. It's, I think Sadie's grandma was the one that actually saw my van out somewhere. And she was so, like, that's ideal is when you just get somebody that was just simply looking for a mobile delivery this whole time. Like, satisfied with the haircut that they've been getting. It makes it easier on you, too, like, when they're already in the cut that they like. You just gotta follow that pattern. So anyway, to me, these are like bread and butter dolls. Because she takes me like an hour, maybe an hour and 15, and I'm nitpicking, which I do sometimes. She took me maybe a little longer today because she was matted on her chest. But no biggie, we got it out. I think there might still be a tangle or two. I'll find out whenever I go to trim the furnishings. shown how to do round feet a bunch, but I'll just kind of quickly tell you. Put you down a tiny bit. There we go. So, I like my little curves, and I just kind of go around in a circle, you guys. It's that easy. Like, it's seriously so easy. So bizarre. S-I-R-I. -I. Sometimes, like, I don't even say anything that sounds close to that. And it will like pick up, especially with these AirPods, it doesn't do it as much like on my regular phone or whatever. But anyway, so once I get that foot the shape that I want it, I'm just gonna brush all this like really fine hair up. I'm actually going to just fully take her up. 
out of this to finish up her furnishings. And she's just a pet trim. I think I already said that. So this is where she was mounted right here. I'm just going to grab my long curves. Make 
such a big difference when they're super used to being friends. You're a dream, Sadie. I just love what I do. I really do. Like, doing the mobile grooming is... I just fucking love it. I never thought I would. This is definitely not a long-term goal of mine. But... that I see, all of my clients, love my man, got to get on all day how much I love this man, it's the biggest blessing that I've ever received, is this man, I'm something for you guys and like be like a good groomer but then I got home and my ex had fucking got his debit card sent to my house instead of his house and I'm not a petty ass bitch because I believe in karma and um I wanted to go bring that by his house because I knew if it was my fucking debit card that I accidentally got sent to his house, that's what I'd want him to do, even though I know he wouldn't do that. And I honestly think that my um, $600 thing, I think, is honestly going to be sent to his house. Anyway, so I went and put that shit in his mailbox, like, let his fucking little good friend know, like, hey, bitch, I'm fucking bringing by this fucking debit card so tell him i'm not trying to break into his fucking mailbox or something he's lucky i'm even bringing it by so anyway i got myself some champagne pre-work or post-work champagne i got home and my dogs had gotten into my cookies and it had to have been max I had to do the max because I had it pushed so far back on the counter. Like, I really am not sure how he even got them. I'm really not even sure. But so they ate like fucking probably almost two dozen cookies, chocolate chip and sugar cookies while I was at work today. So enough is enough. They have been, my dogs have been little, this is part of the reason I need champagne. My fucking dogs have been so bad recently, you guys. They're having some really big jealousy issues with, like, Stevie going to work. And it's like, I don't really know what to do about it other than um, I have one crate and I'm taking one of my mom's crates so that um, I can just crate them while I'm fucking gone. Because, swear to God, they're going to, like, literally, they're getting to the point of, like, dangerous. Like, the other day I came home and I'm pretty sure Luna ate cardboard. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure she ate cardboard. <laughs> So, anyway, um, it really sucks because they are, Max is seven and Luna is six and I'm literally going to have to start crating them like they're puppies. But what are you going to do? I don't want to come home to a dead fucking dog because they ate something random. Because it used to just be they got into food or trash or whatever, so I've gotten smart. Um, they got lucky on the cookies, but everything else, um, I lock my trash can. I have, like, um... 
this little lid locker thing here and I'll lock that shit so they can't fucking um flip my trash can because I have done that um so I'll do that and then I'll do all, like then they just like will find something random like literally I when I went on vacation I made sure none of their regular things that they would get into I made sure none of it was available right and I came home and they fucking ate my remote ate my remote so anyway um they are just Like, I don't have enough to worry about without these fucking dogs. So, anyway, yeah. My mom has an extra crate. I have a crate. So, now I'm going to have to crate Max and Lena when I'm gone. Stevie already has a crate. She already gets crated when I'm gone. Because she, like, is another one. She's, like, I call her the scavenger. She's always scavenging for some random thing. And she is, like, the dangerous one. She'll literally eat anything. She's an outside dog, formerly. Uh, formerly. So, I can sound like I said formally. She's not, she's not formerly, uh, was a backyard dog. So, she has, like, no manners. She still acts like a scoundrel. <laughs> so, anyway, y'all, the end of this day feels like it was so chaotic. I, like, I feel like I had, like, a fucking panic attack having to go bring that shit back to my ex's house. Oh, God. I was, like, so scared he's going to, like, be there. I was, like, literally, I was, like, if I pull up and he's outside or something, I'm just going to throw it out the window and keep driving. <laughs> um, but he wasn't there. Nobody was there. So, I just threw it in the mailbox, told his friend. His friend told him, so he knew. Um, and, yeah, like I said, I I posted about it on Instagram. I had, like, 12 people, like, instantly be like, yes, fucking return it this under. And that's, like, really, like, I, I know people are saying that because they're being, like, protective over me and they're, like, fuck him kind of thing. I totally, like, I really appreciate it. But, like, also, if I was the idiot that sent my debit card to the wrong address, I would not want him to do a return to sender to me. So, I believe in karma. So, I believe if I did that to him, then it's kind of asking, like, the same thing. Like, so if I had something sent to him that was important, like, he'd probably just trash it. And he still might. He still might. But that's fucking bad karma. And that's on him, not me. I did the right thing and he can live with himself if he, if he wants to do something petty like that then he would have to live with himself you know I didn't do shit wrong to him just being honest he was the one cheating on he was y'all he was living at my fucking house and while I was at work he was cheating on me like do I need to explain <laughs> you know what I mean so it's not like I owe this motherfucker any favor favors but again I believe in karma I believe in the law of attraction and I think that if I would have just thrown that away that would have been bad juju so I didn't do it I brought it to his fucking house but it really did stress me the fuck out it was so stressful <laughs> anyway no grand dinner tonight to show yeah no I'm not I don't even know what time it is it's like eight o'clock yeah I'm not making some grand dinner tonight I'm probably gonna like warm up some soup or do something like super easy like that maybe like throw some freezer food in the fucking oven or something I don't even know if I'm gonna use my uh air fryer tonight I'm a, like not lying I'm a little half drunk <laughs> I got home and I was like I am gonna drink some champagne I like to keep um champagne and orange juice to make myself mimosas on my Sunday brunch um but you know sometimes you get off work and you're real stressed and you just need a glass of champagne you know what I'm saying Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Cheers. If you're also drinking a post-work wine or beer or whatever, post-work beverage, cheers to us. We worked hard today. Congratulations, people, for making it through this Monday. Oh, it's a Monday. We made it through. Oh, it's a Monday and I had to deal with ex-boyfriend drama. Like, oh, I hope it's not a projection of the rest of the week. <laughs> if, if it is, I might need more champagne. Oh. Hmm. It does help. I really do. Like, <laughs> don't get on here like, you fucking alcohol. Like, like, bitch, I really don't drink like that. Um, but it does, like, it really calmed my nerves. And now I'm feeling like that little goofy, happy, talkative kind of tipsy. Um, so anyway, 10 out of 10 for the champagne. Especially when you have to deal with ex-boyfriend drama. Um, so yeah, cheers to you guys. I hope you're having an amazing Monday. But you're not going to see this on Monday, I don't think. Maybe Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday. I don't know. <laughs> Happy whatever day it is when you see this. I love you guys. Cheers. Bye.